Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. This is Who Are We? Number 6. Today's message is Sabbath. Now, here's Pastor Kerry. Well, we are continuing on with our series, um, Who Are We? And today, when you think about like a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, um, oftentimes you, you ask like, what, what do you believe in? Have you ever heard that? Someone tell you that? Seventh day of Christian, what do you believe in? Oftentimes, you just use your name as something of what we believe in. Seventh day is Sabbath, and Adventist means the waiting for Jesus to come. Um, that's probably the easiest way to describe your beliefs. So, last week we talked about the law, and then we talked about the Ten Commandments, and one of the Ten Commandments is. Remember the Sabbath day holy. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is the Sabbath. But before we begin on that, I have a question. Describe your idea of what would be the perfect day with your father. It's Father's Day um, weekend. So what would be your day... What would be a special day? Or what was your greatest memory of your dad? Think about that. I remember when I was uh, eight, uh, probably nine years old, I was in Rapid City by Mount Rushmore, and we were on a raft. I was on a raft with my dad. And, he's just, and he was singing um, songs and just getting words of wisdom from my dad. And it was a beautiful weather, and, and just, you know, I think of that, and I imagine myself in heaven with him, um, maybe doing the same thing as that. Um, and even today, as we were singing, I was, you know, when you worship, I don't know about you, but when I worship, a lot of weird thoughts pop in my head. I don't know about you. A lot of things, maybe dumb things that I did or something, and I realized it's like things that I need to give to God I, I, I think about during my worship. And then I was thinking about um, this, and my dad died a couple years ago. And all of a sudden, I just started to feel really emotional, like how I miss my dad, you know? And I don't know if you've, missed your, you've lost your dad. If you had, it's, it's something that is, um, it affects your life forever. He's no longer with us. Um, but so... Think about what is the perfect day of your father, with your father. Sabbath, there's one way to look at it. The Sabbath is about spending a day with your dad, with your God. It's Father's Day once a week. Amen? Amen. Father's Day once a week. And what a blessing that is for us, that we have this. That we don't have to just celebrate it once a year. Um, and God doesn't mind those collect calls. Just, just come to him. Spend that time with him. And so that's what the Sabbath is all about. But let's look it up, look through scripture and, and, and see what the Sabbath is about. Um, Exodus 20, 8 through 10 is, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days shall labor and do all the work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord, your God. On it shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or your daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your animals or any foreigners residing in your towns. You know, sometimes we look at laws as, oh man, why do they have that? 65 miles speed zone on the freeway. Wow, it's a law. You know? We look at laws as being an oppression a thing or, or being, you know, being told what to do. No one likes to be told what to do. And here the Bible says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. 
And you know what? You can't do any work on the Sabbath. What a punishment that is. Oh, I can't do any work. Oh, man. Oh, that is so harsh, God. What do you mean? I want to work until my, my fingers are, are to the bone, you know? But God has given us this, this, this command, Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Keep it holy. Spend time with me. And, um, and why? One is it continuing on in the, in the Ten Commandments. It says, for the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, rest the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Why do we remember the Sabbath day? According to the, this version of the Ten Commandments, it is because God created us. And we remember where we come from when we keep the Sabbath day. We remember our identity. We remember who created us. Does this world have a problem remembering that God created this earth? It does. It does. Everybody's got all their um, um, theories on what has happened on this earth or how this earth has, has been formed. We all, you know, have our ideas. But we've kind of, in the end, forgot that we are God's children. And the Sabbath is here to help us remember where we come from. That we are his children. He's there. He's, he's given it to us so we don't forget. It's also in another version in the Bible. It's also to help us remember that what he's done, um, he's freed us from slavery. That we are, we are, we are free to worship God um, anyway, uh, worship him, and we're free from, um, back in uh, Moses, he freed God, uh, God's people out of slavery. And so it was a sign to remember that we, we're, we're free, free to worship him. Um, so the Sabbath is, um, has so many um, uh, points to it. Let's continue on. Um, the other thing is, if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride in triumph on heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. He calls it the Sabbath as a delight. And if you keep it holy, if you remember him on this day, it will be a great joy, a great joy. So the happiest people on earth should be Sabbath keepers, right? Right? The happiest people on earth should be Sabbath, Sabbath keepers because God created us this day for us to spend time with him. If we to spend time with him, spending this amazing moment with our Father, we will have this joy. Has Sabbath ever been a burden in your life? just waiting for it to get over. I've heard stories of people sitting at the mall waiting for it to get end, you know, so they could go. Sundown's over. All right. Phew. Time to go shopping, right? But we just need to put it in perspective. You know, when I first became a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, my lifestyle was crazy. I would work um, all day, then I would go and play basketball for four hours a day. And then I would go out with my friends. And I would, I would, I would um, 
And that would basically be my life. I was constantly going, constantly running. And then I realized about every two weeks or so, I would crash. I would stay at home and I would sleep all day long for a whole day. Do you know anybody like that that's just constantly going, running, going crazy? Maybe you're one of those people, right? And then I'm sitting here, and I had never heard of Seventh-day Adventist Christians. I have never heard of the Sabbath before in my entire life. And I'm sitting there, and I'm hearing this evangelistic um, series of C.D. Brooks. I'm hearing the, the speaker talk about the Sabbath. For the very first time, I heard the word Sabbath. And I heard, as he was describing it, describing that God created the day for us to rest, a break from everything else that we're doing. I listened to that, and I looked at my lifestyle, and I'm like, Lord, I need this. I need this peace, this time where, where I just disrupt the, the train, the crazy train that I was putting my life on, disrupt it, and so I could just spend some time just contemplating God and everything that my, where my life is headed. And God created this. It's, it's part of, it's, it's like part of our human nature to um, connect it with God for us to, to stop everything we're doing and spending time with God. And that's what the Sabbath is all about. It's not about just spending a day going to church and then, you know, just getting it over with and then go on with the rest of our life. It's for us to experience joy and delight and peace. Mark 2, 23 through 24. It says, On Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain, grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Something got confused. The Pharisees, um, the Israelites, God gave them the Sabbath day. And then they started to make um, laws of how you are to keep the Sabbath. You can only take so many footsteps. And if you took so many footsteps, you know what you have to do? Even if it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of the sun, you have to stop and wait there until the Sabbath was over. There was like 700 some laws of how you were supposed to keep the Sabbath. And so we lost all kind of practicality on this. So if someone is hurting or sick, you know what? It was against the law to do work on the Sabbath. And so we lost perspective of what the Sabbath is all about. And Jesus here was there the disciples were hungry, and so they picked some grain, and, they, and he fed the disciples, and they ate. And we have to put it in perspective. Sabbath isn't about things that you don't do. It's not about the things I don't do. It's the things about doing. And what are you going to do on the Sabbath? You're going to spend time with your father because it's Father's Day, right? I was thinking about that earlier. Imagine... Um, you having Father's Day, um, you know, tomorrow's Sunday. You got everything planned. Oh, man, I'm going to go and I'm going to get a big screen TV so I can watch the World Cup. And then I'm going to go and, and I'm going to buy some pizza. And, and I'm going I'm, I'm to invite all my family over. And I'm just going to have an awesome time um, on this Father's Day. And then you, you do it. You're enjoying yourself. Everything's cool. And like, oh, wait. I forgot to invite dad, <laughs> right? That's a lot of us is, 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 you know, we have this day, we're doing all these things and having a, uh, whatever, doing a good day, whatever, we, whatever's happening on our, our Sabbath, but we forget 
to spend time with Jesus. Um, so, the other thing is, um, one thing to know is it was Jesus' custom to keep the Sabbath, right? You've heard that text before. It was his routine to keep the Sabbath. And one of the things that's gone on in earth history, I had never heard of the Sabbath until I was 20 years old. Never knew anybody kept the Sabbath. I did know, heard of, I had some Jewish friends. Um, but, but what a minority of people that keep the Sabbath. And why is that? Why is that such a minority? One, it was Jesus' custom to keep the Sabbath. Well, it was changed. The Sabbath was changed. Um, um, you know, so uh, that must mean Peter and Paul must have started worshiping on Sunday. But this was Paul's writing, very interestingly enough. In Hebrews 4.1, it says, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of us be found to have fallen short of it. So he's saying since the beginning, since there was this promise of having this rest, let's not have any of you fall short of that rest. And then verse Hebrews 4, 3 through 4. Now we who have believed entered that rest just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they, will, they shall never enter my rest. And yet the works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he was spoken about, he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. You know, what this is, now we who believe entered that rest. God has said, shall I declare in my oath in my anger, they shall never enter this rest. And yet the works have been finished since the creation of the world. So Paul himself also believed that we needed to continue in God's rest on the Sabbath day. But it's a different type of rest. I remember one day, my first time I ran into a Jewish person as a Seventh-day Adventist. And I was so excited to talk to this person because we keep the same Sabbath day. And I was like, oh, you know what? Hey, I'm a Sabbath keeper too, just like you. And that person looked at me like, no, you don't. This is my, this is a sign of God's and our people. You, you may go to church on Saturday, but it's for a different reason than for what I am. And I was all hurt by that. But then as I studied, he's right in some way. So she was. It is for a different reason. According to Paul, our rest comes in with Jesus. It comes with Jesus. When Jesus is with you on the Sabbath day, then you are truly at rest. Amen? Amen? So it is a different Sabbath than the way they understood it. And then he continues on. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains that a Sabbath rest is for the people of God. Paul kept the Sabbath just as Jesus did, just as the Israelites did. They all kept the Sabbath. It had not changed. There was no place in the New Testament where it would declare that now we are going to worship on the first day of the week. But through time, through history, and for other for various reasons it started to change people more and more started to go to church on worship on sunday sunday became the day of worship and now as you see the majority of the world goes to church on sunday 
But I still believe that the Bible um, speaks of us continually being in God's rest, to remember the Sabbath, to keep it holy, to remember where we come from, that God created us. He created, it's, it's as vital to us today as it was for Jesus, for Paul, and for the Israelites. Now it says, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Does that sound like Paul was a Sabbath keeper? He was. He was. Now, Mark 2, 27. It says, Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made, not, made for man, not for man, man for the Sabbath. For the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath. Who wrote this? Who said this? Jesus said this. And what this means is that, as I said before, the Israelites created a system of how to keep the Sabbath and created all these laws. And this is the way you're supposed to keep the Sabbath. And it became such a burden on people. And also, it became, they became slaves to their own laws. Okay, I can only take this many steps. I can only do this. If someone is hurting, and it, I can't help them if it breaks the Sabbath. They became slaves to the Sabbath. And then all of a sudden, it becomes like the whole purpose of us, of our living, is uh, on the Sabbath day, is for us to make sure we appease the Sabbath. All right? Do you know what I'm saying? That we're just here to make sure we do everything right so God will be glad, happy for us. Or will be, um, that we're, we're following his command. And so can you, you see that point of view? And after a while, you're like, oh man, this is a lot of work. There's no joy in this. And I'm just a peon that's just trying to obey what God is telling us to do. But Jesus says here that the Sabbath, we are not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for us. The Sabbath was made for our blessing, for our good, for our, uh, for our joy. F so we can have this rest so we can have this Father's Day for God. And for, it's, it's here to bless us. And sometimes we have turned it around and made it about rules and laws. We made it restrictive. And then we start comparing others and how they are keeping the Sabbath become judgmental. And all of a sudden, we become slaves again, just like the Israelites, slaves again to the Sabbath. But if we have it in our mindset, every Sabbath, God spent, created this special day for us to be with him, to be at rest, to experience God's love, to experience Father's Day with him. How awesome that is. That's what the Sabbath is truly about. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we praise you, Lord. We praise you for who you are. You are our God. While saying that is, 
is so much. You, are, you have such incredible, you are the creator of this universe. You are the sovereign God. You are a God of authority. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are so awesome and great, Lord, and big. But you're also so personal that you love us, that you love me, and you love each person individually here in this room. So much so that you want to be with us. You, the Father of the universe, wants to be with me, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us this day, this, this moment where we can come to you. Where you, you can, where you show your love for us. Where you restore us from our craziness of in our lives, Lord, where you give us peace, where you help us realize where we come from. What an awesome thing. What an awesome plan that you had for us by giving us your Sabbath, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.